Hi everyone, I'm Patrick and welcome to an exciting new video. Python 3.11 was released today, so in this video I walk you through all important new features in just three minutes. Let's get started. First of all, it got faster. Various speed improvements have been implemented, resulting in a faster startup and faster runtime. Python 3.11 is on average 25% faster than 3.10. Depending on your workload, the speedup could be up to 10 to 60% faster. Then it got better error messages. The interpreter will now point to the exact expression that caused the error instead of just the line. For example, here one variable is none, so we can't access point 2.x. This is especially helpful for beginners. The addNote method is added to base exception. It lets you add additional information, which then appears in the traceback. Here, when we catch an exception, we can call addNote, and when this is re-raised, we see the two nodes in the traceback. Exception groups and except star were added. They make it possible to group exceptions and raise them together. First of all, the exception group is a subclass of the normal exception, so we can get all the behavior of the base class. In an exception group, we can define multiple inner exceptions and nested exception groups, and when we raise this and look at the traceback, we can easily follow the architecture of the group. Then, when we want to catch this, we can use except star to match all the subgroups of the exception group. This allows programs to race and handle multiple unrelated exceptions simultaneously. New features related to type pins and the typing module were added. The new literal string annotation may be used to indicate that a function parameter can be of any literal string type. Type checkers can then enforce that sensitive functions, such as those that execute SQL statements, are called only with static arguments, providing protection against injection attacks. Required and not required provide a straightforward way to mark whether individual items in a type dict must be present. Those two definitions are equivalent, so in this case title has to be defined. And the new self annotation with a capital S provides a simple and intuitive way to annotate methods that return an instance of their class. Common use cases include alternative constructors provided as class methods and the enter method that returns self. Also, a whole new module was added, the TOML lib module, which adds support for parsing TOML files. TOML files get more and more popular in defining the build system requirements of Python projects. The new module has two methods, tomllib.load to parse a file and then have this as a dictionary, and tomllib.loads, which does the same thing but loads the configuration from a string. The async io task group class was added, which is an asynchronous context manager holding a group of tasks that are then awaited when the context manager exits. For new code, this is recommended over using create task and gather directly. And the math module got two new cool functions, math.exp2, which returns two raised to the power of x, and math.cbrt, which returns the cube root of x. All right, so these are the most important new features. If you want to read about all changes, then I leave you a link in the description below. Let me know in the comments if you like the new features and if you plan to use the new version soon. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.